When I was at work the other day, my shipping clerk came in and told me that the computer shut off and it wouldn't turn back on. That's a problem. So I went out to investigate. I checked to make sure the surge protector was on and that the outlet had power. No problems there. So I tried to turn on the computer. The, uh, the LED power light flickered a little bit, but the computer didn't come on. I checked the cables, make sure they were all good and tight. But uh, looked like the uh, computer was dead. So I figured the problem was probably the power supply unit, or PSU, which is this piece right here. I've removed it from the computer. Now it didn't necessarily have to be this. There could be other problems, maybe the motherboard, or maybe even the hard drive. But I knew this supplied power to everything, and so it was the first thing I wanted to check. Now when I opened up the computer, everything looked fine other than being a little bit dusty, which was expected. I went ahead and removed the power supply unit, which is pretty easy. Just has these four screws here, and you have to unplug these two plugs. Now the way you test a power supply unit is with this plug right here. So there's a variety of colored wires here. The green wire is the on-off switch for the computer. Now it goes through the motherboard, but we have it unplugged, so we're just going to bypass that whole mess, and we're just going to work straight with this plug. So that green wire, you take another piece of wire, just scrap, this is out of my automotive parts, and you put the green wire in this pin right here, where the green wire's at and you put the other end of this wire on any one of these black wires because the black wires are ground. And that completes the circuit. Then you plug in the power cord right here. Now this one doesn't have an on off switch plug in the power cord and you plug the power cord into the wall. As long as this uh, wire is connected, the fan should come on. If it does, your power supply is working. Now they don't all turn the fan on, unfortunately. Uh, but actually it is kind of good that they don't all turn the fan on. So for low, low noise operation, sometimes you don't want the fan to come on. I'll get into that more later, but so there's a couple reasons why the fan might not come on. Uh, the first is if the internals of the power supply unit are designed to create power so efficiently that they don't generate much heat, at least at low power levels. Uh, in that case, the fan might not come on if you don't have anything hooked up drawing power. Um, there's also uh, very similar to that, there's also some power supply units that won't come on at all to provide any power if they recognize that they don't have anything plugged in that needs power. So in that situation, what you might want to do is leave the power supply unit in the computer, just unplug this connector, and leave the other connector plugged in. And that will be your, uh, your power draw when you turn this on. Um, some power supplies have additional wiring cables for uh, hard drives or disk drives, things like that. Uh, that would also work for creating a draw. So, uh, assuming that the power supply is good, then what's supposed to happen is that you get your test meter out. Now the power supply here, it converts power from AC, alternating current, from the wall to DC, direct current. So alternating current is the wavy line, uh, voltage is the V, so wavy line voltage is alternating current, and the straight line voltage is direct current. So you would uh, turn your, your test meter over here to DC voltage, and you would put the the black uh, test lead here 
on one of these black wires, which is for ground. Uh, this one right here happens to be black and pretty convenient. Um, then holding that there, you test the voltage of the other wires that aren't black. And if the power supply unit is on and working, whether the fan's spinning or not, you'll get voltage. So if your, if your fan is not spinning, but the power supply unit still works, this is a second way to check if your power supply unit is good. Now, uh, with this one, the fan didn't come on, and I didn't get any voltage anywhere, which made me wonder, am I doing this right? So I wanted another test. Luckily, I have uh, multiple workstations that are identical to this, and I just uh, took one of them apart, robbed the power supply out of it, plugged it into the computer that had failed, and the computer booted up just fine. So with a known good power supply, I tested the machine and everything worked. That really confirmed for me that the power supply unit was the problem. I then removed the good power supply unit, plugged in this green wire here, and uh, plugged the good power supply unit into the wall. The fan did come on, indicating that that power supply unit was good. Then I went ahead and tested the voltage of all the pins on this plug and made a little diagram. I did the same thing for this plug while I was at it. Here's what that looks like. I have the uh, green wire here connected to the black with my little jumper wire. That makes the power supply unit come on. I have uh, these three right here which are empty. There's no pin in the socket. I have uh, these two, a gray and a purple wire which are plus five volts. I have uh, three more grounds, black wires. I have three 12 volt yellow wires. And I have this blue wire here, which is negative 12 volts. Now it's important to have your black test lead on your test meter connected to the ground and your red test lead connected to whatever you're testing in order to read the positive and negative correctly. If you have the red test lead on the ground and you put the black one here on this pin, it's going to read positive 12 volts because your probes are backwards. I know negative 12 volts might sound confusing, but that's what it is. Now, the reason I wanted to know that information is because this plug only has 14 pins, and the industry standard is 24 pins. Big difference. So when I go to buy a new power supply, it's going to have 24 pins and a different connector that doesn't plug into my motherboard. Here's what the motherboard looks like. Power supply goes in this hole up here at the top. Here is the 4-pin connector, and here is the 14-pin connector. This big green piece is the motherboard. Underneath this fan right here is the processor. This is a heat sink and a fan for the heat sink keeps the processor cool. These two things right here are the RAM, also known as DDR. The hard drive's down here at the bottom right, and up at the top we have an optical disk drive or a CD drive. Now I'm not messing with any of that stuff, really, I'm just replacing the power supply. The reason this has the unusual 14-pin connector is because this is a Lenovo computer. For whatever reason, Lenovo decided to use this proprietary connector so that you can't use other people's parts with their equipment. I still need to fix the machine, so I'm going to find a way to work around that. The few videos I was able to find on this topic on YouTube weren't in English, so it made sense to make my own video. Hopefully this will help a few people out. So when you're buying a new power supply, the first thing you want to check out is the form factor. And that's just basically an industry standard size for getting the box to fit inside the computer. The main one you're going to see is the one here in the middle, ATX. This is what's used in just about everything. The SFX size, as you can see, is smaller. It's used on microcomputer, you know, small builds, really compact stuff. And then this other one here, TFX, this is a little more unusual. Uh, you don't see this very often, but I am going to talk about it in a minute, so uh, I went ahead and put it here. So the computer I'm working on is a Lenovo E73 ThinkCenter 
which is uh, this top one here. Well, actually, it's both of them, which is a little awkward. I don't know why the company does that. But uh, the one I have is the one on the top. It looks a lot like a typical computer tower, and uh, it takes an ATX power supply, which is this size right here. Now, the company might have been in a, either a later year or a previous year, so this is either a newer or older model. There's this other E73 Lenovo Think Center, which is, as you can see from these four things, it can be set down flat, so it's horizontal instead of vertical. And uh, it takes a much smaller power supply. You see the size difference here? This is a TFX power supply. So uh, pay attention to whatever you're working on. Both of these are going to have the 14-pin proprietary connector for the power supply. But you need a power supply that's going to fit inside your tower. Luckily, mine is ATX, and this is the typical industry standard size that's used on almost everything, so I didn't have any problems with that. But if your computer takes a different size power supply unit, you need to be paying attention to that. If the pictures in this video weren't helpful enough for figuring out which form factor size of power supply unit you have or need, then uh, try Google. You can come up with the dimensions of the form factor sizes pretty easily and just measure. Okay, so once you have the right physical size of the box of the PSU, uh, the next thing you can look at that you need to know is how many watts it puts out. So this, oh, we got it upside down here. Let's see if we can get this to focus. This is a Hunt Key power supply. Here's the model number, HK280-25FP. Here it has some specifications for the wire voltages. That's kind of nice. And output wattage, 180 watts. So this is a relatively cheap power supply unit. This is, uh, you know, just what the factory used when they were building the computer. And of course, they don't want to waste any money. They're not going to give you a bigger one than you really need. And so it came with this 180 watt uh, power supply. Apparently, that's all the computer needs just for office type work. It's not a gaming machine or anything super heavy duty. So I don't know how much wattage the computer actually uses, but I know that the power supply is 180 watts, so it doesn't use more than that. I don't think the company's going to give me extra watts, more than I need, because that would cost them money, and so I think this is probably about the right size, uh, minimum size, for the computer. Now the problem with using the smallest uh, wattage power supply unit that you need is that it runs hotter. So it, it works harder to make the power, and then the fan comes on and the fan runs a lot. So it makes more noise, it makes more heat, and heat eventually is what kills uh, electrical stuff. So this particular computer is, uh, it's, as I mentioned, it's my shipping uh, station computer, so it's in kind of a warehouse environment. It's hot, it's not climate controlled, it's dusty. Uh, not good things for computers. So I wanted to get a, a better power supply unit. Um, so I knew I wanted to make at least 180 watts. And I know that the Corsair brand is my preferred brand of power supply unit. Now you can get whatever brand you want. Corsair is just the ones that I like. They have a good reputation and from what I've seen they're reliable. So this is the one I picked out, RM650X. 650 is the wattage. The reason I chose that wattage is because the Corsair power supplies like this have a, a quiet mode fan. The internals of the power supply unit are efficient enough that they can make 40% of the rated power without generating enough heat to turn the fan on. I like that. It runs cooler and it runs quieter. Now I'm not really concerned about the, uh, the volume level of my fan in the warehouse, 
but running cooler is a big deal. It's already hot in the room and I don't need to be generating additional heat. So by running cooler, it should make the equipment last longer. Also by running the fan less, it should suck less dust through the machine because I do have a dust problem in the warehouse. So 40% of the 650 watts is 260 watts. So the fan on this power supply unit won't come on until there is a demand of 260 watts from the system, which shouldn't ever happen because it was running entirely on a 180 watt power supply. Now, honestly, I could have used an even smaller power supply than this. Uh, I would have been very happy with a 550 instead of a 650, but unfortunately the 550 was out of stock, and so I ended up with this 650 instead. This is a gold-rated efficiency power supply unit, so hopefully I'll actually use less power than this power supply unit used to convert the AC power from the outlet into the DC power needed to run the machine. Probably not a big enough difference to notice anything on my power bill, but every little bit helps. Efficiency does drop if you're using less than 10% of the rated power. So if I were using less than 65 watts in the machine, I would be uh, less efficient at, at generating power with this power supply unit. Um, you know, I can live with that. Again, that's why the 550 probably would have been better for me. Um, I don't know exactly how many watts I'm using, but as long as I stay somewhere between uh, 65 watts and the 180 watts that this was rated at, I think I'll be pretty happy. So let's take a look at this power supply. Um, let's see, open it here somehow. All right, we got a power cord, plugs into the wall. Have this is the uh, cable for the motherboard. This is a modular power supply unit, which means you plug in the cables that you need. They're not just automatically hanging out of the box. So uh, that's the motherboard cable. This is the other cable. I'm not going to use any of those extra cables. They give you way more cables than you need in case you have a bunch of uh, additional accessories. Okay, get this box out of my way. Okay, so this is this is what the new power supply unit looks like. There's the back. It's got an on-off switch, power cable. The fan is on this side, which needs to be down. This is towards the motherboard. I wouldn't want to put this against the top of the case because then it wouldn't be able to get any air. Not that the fan's going to come on anyway, I guess. So maybe it, it honestly wouldn't matter for me because this, this can't use enough power to make the fan come on. But still, you know, best practice, fan should go down towards the motherboard in case it ever does come on. Who knows, maybe it'll get really hot in the uh, warehouse and maybe it'll actually kick on. Uh, not because it's generating heat, but just because it's hot outside. Okay, so uh, that's the back. This is the bottom. And this is where the cables are at. Like I said, this is modular. You just plug in whatever cables you need instead of having the cables all coming out of the side of the box there. So, we're gonna do this one right here first. This is the industry standard 24 pin connector that is used on almost all motherboards, but unfortunately not on my machine. Uh, so that goes to the motherboard. The other end of this cable plugs into the power supply. And it's labeled right here, motherboard. So that's these two connectors. Pretty straightforward stuff. There we go. And 
we, we're also going to use this cable. Now there's a, a four pin connector right here. And this cable right here is an eight pin connector. That doesn't really matter. We're just going to plug it in and only four of them are going to connect. It works fine. The other four just aren't going to anything. So we're going to plug this in right here. This says uh, PCIe slash CPU. CPU is what we're powering with this. It's a central processing unit. It's the thing that's underneath that fan and heat sink in the picture. Okay, so that's all the cables that I need for this machine. I, I don't have to plug in any of this other stuff. Move the dead power supply out of our way. All right, let's take off this uh, safety label too, huh? What's this say? Silent operation at low to moderate loads. In this mode, the fan will not spin. So uh, if you go to test it and the fan doesn't spin, don't think it's broken. It's supposed to do that. All right, we're going to plug in the power cable here. That's a, a good idea. Make sure I got that plugged in good. And uh, here is the switch. The, the zero is off that is not connected. And the straight line is on. We're going to put that to off for a minute here. Just to be extra safe so that we know it's off, you can see here that the cable's not even plugged into the wall. Okay. So back to this. Now we have this 24 pin connector. Let's uh, spin it around this way, huh? Okay, here's the 24 pin connector. This is what all these wires do. Uh, I pulled this up on the internet and I also tested the power supply with my test meter to confirm that this was correct. It works just like I said earlier. You uh, put your little jumper wire into this green wire, which is for power supply on, and you put the other end of the jumper wire to ground, and then your power supply is on. Even if the fan doesn't come on, you can read the voltage uh, using your test meter to check all these pins and make sure they are what they are. Now, if you want to check the ground, one of the ground wires to make sure that they're actually ground, you can use a continuity test between the pin and uh, should be the outside of the case for the box as long as it's not a painted area. You know, you have to be contacting metal. Or you could also test continuity between the pin on the wiring connector and if you unplug the cable from the wall, you can test it between uh, that cable, you know, the ground prong on the cable. It should be connected because ground is ground. The third way that you can test the grounds is to put the red test lead on one of the, say, 12 volt uh, wires, and then use the black test lead to test all the black wires and make sure you get the 12 volt reading. If you don't, then you're either not connected right or the black lead isn't on the ground. Now, ideally, you don't actually have to have a test meter and do any of this stuff that I'm telling you about. Um, because you can just follow this video and I've already done all that work. So you can just plug it in and it should work. But I'm showing you how to check things if you want to check them. Okay, so I've got my complete pinout wiring diagrams for the connector for the 14 pin and for the 24 pin. And I got to find a way to make this work with my 14 pin uh, connector. Now, I got one of these pin removal tools. This I just picked this up at the auto parts store. Um, it's handy for automotive stuff, but it, it works for this too. So you would use the the smallest one here on this tool. Now, every tool is a little different. 
Uh, they do make tools specifically for this. That's probably a better way to go. This is just something I had for automotive stuff. But it does work. Um, the With the connector held here so that the, the latch is at the top, then the connectors on this are going to be on the sides. I think I'd rather show you on the old broken one than, than mess with this one. So, just a second. Okay. Okay, here we are. Now, each of these pins is on the end of a wire. It's crimped onto the end of the wire, and the pin has um, two little flaps on the sides. Now, with the latch here at the top, the, the little flaps are going to be at the right and the left sides of the, each pin, not on the top and the bottom. So you take your, your smallest tool here, and you uh, wiggle the pin so you can shove this tool down between the pin and the plastic housing. You don't want it inside the socket of the pin. It goes in between. So you shove the tool all the way down in there, and it bends the little flap that catches against the plastic that holds the pin in place. Then we're going to pull it out, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side to bend the other flap. All right. That's all the way down. Pull that out. And then the pin will come out. So that's how you would remove the pin from the wiring connector. Then you take a precision screwdriver and you just bend the little flaps back out again so that they can catch on the plastic. Doesn't take much, just, just a little bit. And then you can put the pin back in the socket where you want it. I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Okay, one's bent out. That looks pretty good. And we'll do the other one. See if we can get the screwdriver under it here. There, now I got it. All right, now the flaps are bent back out. And I can insert this uh, back wherever I want it. Again, making sure that the little flaps are on the sides, not on the top and the bottom. There we go. I think I had it upside down there, but all right, it popped right in and now it's locked in place, doesn't come out. And that's how you would move the wire from one position to another position inside the socket. So my plan here was to um, remove all the wires from this connector and then reuse this plastic connector. I was going to pull the wires I needed out of this one and plug them into the right sockets so that I could plug this in to my motherboard and have everything work like it's supposed to. Again, to make that work, I need three 12 volt wires, a negative 12 volt wire, a 
ground, three more grounds, plus five volts, plus five volts, my green wire that turns the power supply on, and these other three are just empty. So that's all the wires I need, as I just need to be able to get them from this. Now, unfortunately, I found that uh, checking out the pinout on this is that I don't have enough positive 12 volt wires. So it's not that simple. I got everything else I need, and I was just going to leave the, all the wires that I don't need inside this connector so that they didn't, you know, rub up against something and short out. This will keep them from contacting anything they're not supposed to. So unfortunately it wasn't as easy as just swapping pins in the connector. What I ended up doing was getting an adapter harness. Now I didn't really need the adapter harness. I, I could have done this on my own, but for convenience, it was easier just to get the adapter harness. So this was available on Amazon. It's like $5, didn't cost much. And this has a 24 pin connector, plugs in to this right here. And then this end right here has the 14 pin connector that goes into the motherboard. Now, like I was saying, you don't really need this adapter. You can do it uh, on your own if you wanna save the five bucks or the few days wait that it takes to get the thing. Here's how you do it. Take a look at this uh, adapter right here. So uh, let's hook it up, the, point it the same way here as on the diagram. Let's see, this way. Yeah, this matches what the, the pinout diagram I showed you was. This is the, the orientation that matches that. All right, so Probably a little hard for you to see here, but we have this bottom pin right here uh, isn't really used for this application, but this next pin up, which is a positive 12 volt pin, we have two of these yellow wires going into that pin. And then the next pin over has one yellow wire. So that's the key to making it work right there. So that 12 volt pin on, on this connector, sorry, this way, yeah, goes this way. So with the latch here on the right, on the left side, the pin above the bottom one is a 12 volt pin. From that pin, instead of having one wire coming out, you need to have two wires coming out. That way you can have enough 12 volt wires on the other end to feed three pins. So you're going from two 12 volt pins here to three 12 volt pins here. And as far as, you know, how you want to do that, you're probably not going to be able to fit um, both wires into a single pan if you're doing it at home yourself. You're probably going to end up just cutting the wire and splicing in a new piece of wire. Um, you may need to use a piece of this wire off of the dead power supply because it already has the connectors on it right here. And then so you'll... Uh, you'll cut one of these wires and splice it into the other wire. As far as splicing wire, it's best to use some solder and some heat shrink. That's what I would recommend. You might be able to get away with a crimp connector and some electrical tape, but uh, that's, that's just not quite as good. But if you're in a, a climate controlled environment, it's probably fine. The computers aren't uh, really in as harsh of an environment as automotives, so I'm used to working on cars. Okay, so that's what you have to do to convert 24 pins to 14 pins so that you can plug in 
your Lenovo computer. That'll get you a new power supply for your old motherboard and, and computer. Make everything work. Now, something else about this 14-pin uh, connector here, it does have some extra wires that uh, I don't need. So they would be for some other application. I checked the harness and it says it's also good for IBM and Dell in addition to Lenovo. So I haven't had one of those machines apart, but uh, I should probably mention that. Uh, there's an additional red wire here in this corner. We'll call it the bottom right corner. And there is an additional ground in the second slot up on the left. Or at least I think it's a ground. It's a black wire. It looks like all the other black wires, which are grounds. Let's check it and find out. Let's see what those wires are actually doing and then we will label them and put them on the diagram so that anyone who is wanting to create one of these on their own uh, will be able to make their computer work. So let's plug in this harness here. Set the dead power supply out of the way. All right, now we're going to plug this in. Give me just a second to do that. Okay, I got the cable plugged in, and I have the wire here connected to the green wire. Uh, you see it right here, green wire, and to a black ground wire. So this should provide power when I turn the switch on. All right, we're now on. Now the fan doesn't run because, like we said, this has a quiet mode on the fan. Get the test meter out. Put it on DC voltage. Gonna put the black test lead on one of these black ground wires. Use the one in the corner here. And then we'll check out what the the red wire here in the corner does. Looks like it's uh, 5.09 volts on the meter, so we'll call that 5 volts. And the other wire is one that I expect to be a ground. It is this one right above the bottom pin on the left. Yes. So if that was not a ground, then we wouldn't be reading the same 5 volts here. So that's a ground just like the ground we were just on. Okay, so that's what our two additional wires do. I can uh, go ahead and mark them on the chart and update the diagram. Okay, here's that final diagram. The uh, only difference between the Lenovo that I have and whatever other applications this adapter cable is for is that the other applications have this 5 volt wire here and this ground wire here. So those two extra wires do something on other computers. Here's a side-by-side -side diagram for ease of reference. So if you want to make this work without buying the adapter cable, you just remove the pins from all these connectors, uh, except for one of these 12 volt wires. I'd probably leave the one in the corner just because it's easier to work with. And then you're going to remove whichever pins you need from this to match what the wires are supposed to do and plug them into your old connector. Then for your one extra wire here that you left in, you're going to have to cut that wire on the old power supply unit and splice it into one of these other 12 volt wires. If you do that, you can fix your Lenovo power supply problem for next to nothing. You don't have to buy the adapter cable if you can do this, and you can get a 180 watt power supply super cheap somewhere. Uh, check used computers at Goodwill or something. 
180 watts is really nothing compared to modern power supplies. So you can probably find a good used one somewhere. Maybe for free. Maybe you've already got one laying around. All of the wires over here that you're not using, just leave them in the connector so that they don't short out against anything. Just to repeat that with the plugs on the screen here, if you want to make it work, 24 pin to 14 pin, use your pin removal tool. Remove all the pins from your 14 pin connector except for one of the 12 volt pins. Then you remove whichever pins you need according to the wiring diagram, insert them into the holes where they go according to the wiring diagram, and then your one wire that you leave connected here, you're going to have to cut it. Give yourself plenty of room. Cut it somewhere way down here. It just goes to your dead power supply. You're not going to need it for anything. Then you will have to splice that wire into the other 12 volt wire from this harness. Now these wires on the Corsair aren't color coded. That's just for aesthetics. It looks good to not have all the bright colors when you have a, a big window on the side of your computer and you're looking at all the pretty lights and the flashing LEDs and stuff. Um, they don't want to distract you from the pretty stuff with the colored wires. But uh, the cheaper uh, power supply units are going to have the color coded wires. Um, before we go, one more quick note just about uh, this connector here versus this one. So on this, the, the side with the little latch here has the yellow wires, which are 12 volt. The other side has two black wires, which are grounds. On this connector, which has four pins, again, the connectors on the latch side are all 12 volt and the ones on the bottom are all ground. So you plug that in however you can get it to plug in and it's going to work for you. I think this connector even splits into two separate pieces. So you could just plug in four but uh, then the unconnected ones just dangling there so I leave them clipped. There's plenty of room to just you plug in these and the other two just hang out. So. No problems there, that just works. All right, here's what the finished project looks like. Uh, the original power supply was 100 millimeters in depth. Uh, it's about to here, so the new one is 160. I wouldn't go any bigger than 160 millimeters in depth because you need room between these things to plug your connectors in if you have this same kind of tower as I do. If you're working on a different computer with a 14 pin connector, then you just have to measure your depth and make sure the power supply that you buy is going to fit. I did turn it on and test everything. Works great. The uh, extension cable here, the adapter, is really long, so I have a lot of extra cable coiled up in this area, but uh, it works. Okay, I think that's it. That should uh, answer this question for anyone who's trying to solve this problem, and uh, good luck with your project.